YouTube, what's up? Before we dive into it, the best unfiltered raw tier list for leg day. You wanna grow some juicy tree trunks. I got you, stay tuned. But before we dive in, 3sb.co, good company. My clothing line, my apparel, some of the highest quality gym and lifestyle clothing in the game is celebrating our third year anniversary. But one time a year to celebrate getting the keys to the facility, the keys to our warehouse, we do a blowout sale. So 30 to 50% off everything on the website, 3sb.co, only for the next four days once you're watching this. So it ends on the 10th or 11th. Be sure to head to 3sb.co right now. Let's dive in. I'm training legs, we're building up the quads, and I'm gonna tell you, S through F tier, the best exercises for your leg day. So we're starting with the leg press, man, the staple. Now I think the leg press is a very solid movement. I do think there's probably better movements if you're trying to really focus on your quads. So again, it depends on what our ultimate goal is or what muscle we're targeting. Um, something like a hack squat, even the newer pendulum swings and different leg presses have different angles. Um, but typically, we want knee flexion, so we want a positive shin angle. So if we want our knees heading towards our toes, the more that knee bends, the more quad we're gonna grow. If our shins are fairly vertical, now we're getting a little bit more glutes and hands involved. Um, the leg, leg press is obviously fairly safe depending on your experience. If you can keep your back kind of flattened against that piece of equipment, you don't want your lower hips rolling underneath you. Again, overall, really, really solid. I'll probably throw it in the B tier. Now, people got mad at the last tier when I throw things in B, but like B is like solid. Like it's not, it's not a miracle because you can perform it incorrectly. You know, th there's some skill to it. It's not gonna build the biggest legs or like the perfect movement. I think there probably is better movements, but it's very, very quality, right? Gold standard. B is good. And next we're going into the box squat. I think for hypertrophy, if we're just trying to build big, pretty, sexy, cut up legs, we're gonna throw the box squat into D. So now we got the split squat or the rear elevated lunge. I actually think it's one of the best movements. Again, like a leg press, kind of any leg movement, you can control what body part in terms of ham, more hamstring hip dominant or more quad dominant based on that shin angle and how you perform the exercise. I'm gonna throw Bulgarians in the A group. It's easily loadable, obviously by dumbbells, goblet, or by your side. You can start to throw a barbell on your back. Ain't no one like those. Who the fuck does it with the bar? If you get real strong and you can use like a safety squat bar or a cambered bar in a rack, rear elevated. Um, it's my main hypertrophy move. You see me squatting today. This is to keep my strength up. I'm the power builder, of course. And then I'm gonna go get the hypertrophy work. Next, I think we got a deficit deadlift. I hate to agree with all my TikTokers, but overall deadlifts, you can build some muscle because the strength, one, there's like static holds and you, there is a concentric, you control the inside trick. Overall, there, I think it's just a great general movement to build strength, which can translate to other movements. Some of the biggest bed deadlifters are also the guys I know who row the most amount of weight. If you can row the most amount of weight and progressively overload, you're gonna have the biggest back. So things do go hand in hand, but if you isolate it as a movement, it's not the best for hypertrophy. So we'll probably throw it into the C. Next, I think we got the donkey calf raise, made famous by Arnold with a bunch of hot chicks on his back while he's basically shaking his rump by the 90 degrees. It's kind of, you're kind of going that doggy style, but they call it donkey style. And then, you, I mean, for calves, it's fine. So I guess for calves, it's A tier, but let's be honest, who gives a shit about calves? For general athletics, you know, and I think for just a movement, if you're a meathead and you like to lift, the front squat is something that I think everyone should be able to do. It's a good combination of like mobility, coordination, upper and lower body, and it can for sure build muscle. But again, if we're talking about ultimately building our quads, there's probably better movements that are more stable and you can load a little bit safer. Going to the failure on a front squat actually isn't that crazy because you can just dump it, but the skill outweighs how much you can lift. Really good movement, but again, probably a C. The GHR, um, the glued ham raise developer or the glued ham raise um, is also a very great movement um, for general strength, injury prevention, targeting the hamstring from both the hip and knee. Um, but if we're talking about purely building muscle, you know, it's probably going to the top of C or bottom of B. Maybe one of the highest controversial movements. Whoever thought exercise would be so controversial, but there's all these pinheaded idiots on the internet arguing over nothing. The hip thrust. Very least it's gonna help you in the bedroom. I know none of us have a partner or can find love, but one day we'll all find love and these hip thrusts will pay off. Uh, overall, if you can overload a hip extension and your goal is to uh, grow your glutes and hamstrings. It's very stable. 
It's a way you can really overload it with good weight. So for something like this, versus like a hamstring curl, if you're trying to really get those, uh, or even the GHR that we talked about earlier, this is gonna be way above that. So I'm definitely throwing it in the A category. It's not something I personally use. I'm so caked up that I don't want the rest of the internet to be jealous or, or, or vengeful of my cakers. So I keep them at a moderate size. But if you're trying to improve the backside, a Bulgarian and, and, and a hip thrust are great two pinnacles of quad and then glute and ham movements. The high bar squat, which you see me performing, you stay a little bit more upright, you push your knees forward, uh, you can really brace and get strong on it. I think it targets your quads really, really well. Um, a pendulum squat or you know something of that nature is a little bit more stable and you can get a little closer to failure perhaps that way. But I think this is probably low end A, top end B for me that I think should be in everyone's arsenal to build big legs. The next one we're diving in is to a low bar squat. And although bar positioning on your back doesn't directly dictate how you squat, so you can put the bar lower on your back. And stereotypically you'd go wide stance, more vertical shin. Um, but that's only because of geared powerlifting, squat suits, whatever, we don't have to dive into that. And then a high bar, more typically you'd have a narrow stance, so you'd push more into your knees. But a lot of people can have different lower body and upper body actions. So you can have a lower bar position, narrower stance and push into your knees. And because of the bar, uh, it's a little more secure on your back and a little bit closer to your center of gravity and over your midfoot. It's a little easier to keep it there. You can use more weight. For most people can squat more weight. A low bar squat will be the same as my high bar if you perform it that way. The number one man, S tier, pendulum squat. So it has all the factors, like I said, about the high bar squat or low bar squat. You can load weight, you can overload it really easily, except now we're in a fully stable position and all we have to focus on is pushing and you can go really close to failure and get a spot on the back. Um, someone can push it up. Uh, I think it's one of the overall best moves you can do to build overall legs. So you move your stance a little bit lower on the platform, get into those knees, you can move your stance a little bit higher, get a little bit more in your, your hips and glutes. Next, we got the quad extension, top of B. Again, B means solid. Y'all get insulted by a B. Probably one of my favorites, although it's not as loved by others because of the, the, the probably the technicality factor, even though some people do it and then hate on deadlifts, which I don't really get, but the RDL, um, slightly different than the stiff leg. I think we get a slight knee bend. You're starting from the top. You're keeping tension the entire time. Really focus on pushing your knees uh, forward slightly and hips way back. You wanna lean into those hips till you feel a stretch in your ham and then you finish the movement. You can use straps and easily overload it. You can move a lot of weight, just like the deadlift. I'm putting that bottom A tier or mid A tier, just A tier. It's a really great movement. The RDL, glutes, hams, a little bit of low back. A seated leg curl. Um, so the biggest difference in the lying and seated leg curl is that we're training the muscle in a stretched or shortened position. You can definitely do both, and they're probably equally as good. I prefer a laying, because it's a little bit more stretched position, um, but it's not a huge deal. You could probably bang both out. So I'll throw it at the bottom of B as well. Dude, there's so many calves. I'm throwing all the calves out. I don't care. A sissy squat. Body weight style movement, something you can overload. Um, there's definitely machines that also do it, but I wouldn't overthink it. I'm not a huge fan, although there's tons of guys that back it up. I just don't like, I don't enjoy it. And so number one, we gotta enjoy what we're doing, plus have it be uh, targeting what we're trying to target. It's probably in the top C, bottom B, I'll put it in B. Next we have a standing leg curl, plate loaded. A lot of times with leg movements, curls and extensions, plate loaded, because of gravity and physics and Neil deGrasse Tyson type shit. It doesn't actually feel that great at certain ranges because you get towards the top of the movement and you'll lose some of the resistance. Um, these actually don't feel that bad. Again, I'm gonna throw it in the bottom of B. So I think, I'm not sure, don't quote me, but I think we got a stiff leg opposed to an RDL. And basically a stiff leg is just slightly less knee bend and you'll pull it like a deadlift so it starts on the ground each time. Not one of my favorite movements to be honest. If we're gonna go that far, I might as well just deadlift and we'll use a little bit more quad and lift more weight, or we'll lower the weight and do RDL, start from the top, again, getting really tension in there. So only for that reason am I gonna throw it in D, not because it's bad, but because there's two movements, 
you know, on either side of the spectrum from it that are just better. Next, the one and only Dan Green, sumo deadlift. Um, great movement, amazing movement. Obviously, my background is in strength and conditioning powerlifting. I think it's an absolutely amazing movement. If we're purely trying to look pretty and jacked, the sumo is probably going to the top of C. It's viable. It's more quads than you expect. A lot of people, for some reason, let's break the myth right here. Myth busters. That's me busting myths. The sumo doesn't work your ass. For some reason, it's like the booty builder to people. But the booty builder is actually conventional or RDLs. This is a little bit more quad. You still work your hamstrings, you still work your glutes. Glute meat a little bit more, which is like this little triangular muscle up here, the upper outer ass. But it's not building the maximus. Not last, but not least, but not last. The Ronnie Coleman in the parking garage, driveway, barbell on the back, walking lunge. That I think he does with 225, which is absolutely savage. The walking lunge, I think, is one of the most underrated and forgotten movements. It's great. Again, you can focus on that front knee. If you're walking forward, you're gonna get a little bit more hamstring and glute. If you're walking backwards, you might get a little bit more quad. Depending on that shin angle, where we're traveling with our knees, you're gonna get a little bit more quad, a little bit more glute, but great overall leg developer. Really hard, difficult. Sometimes it's good to do difficult things. We'll throw in the bottom of A. Right up there with the Bulgarian. I like the Bulgarian a little bit more, but it's an absolutely great movement. Hack squat, the vertical-ish leg press. That's typically, you're more vertical and charges more onto your quads, puts a little bit more stimulus and attention on that targeted muscle. Probably throw it in the top of A as well. And last but not least, I think we got the Smith machine squat, which I actually love. I don't do them a ton, um, but if you're just trying to build muscle, just trying to look pretty, get the quads popping out at the bottom of your 3SV, good company, hoochie shorts, put it in the A tier. Ladies and gentlemen, follow this to a freaking T and you'll have quads like Ronnie Coleman overnight. I'm gonna finish up my leg extensions myself. I'll catch you in the next one. New content every single day, man. We over me, 3SV.co again, only next five days. We've got a sale going on, 30 to 50% off, everything on the site. Appreciate you. Be a part of something big in yourself, man. Community and culture, something like I'm out.